Hello friends, this is Russian Torts here and I am very excited to announce the start of another series. In this series I'm going to be talking about tortoise enclosures, different types of tortoise enclosures and comparing them. So for those of you that are going to get a tortoise in the near future, which I know a lot of my subscribers don't have a tortoise yet but really want one, these videos are going to be great because they'll kind of talk to you about the benefits and drawbacks of different enclosures. And I know, obviously, all of you guys have already done the research you want about what kind of enclosure you're going to get for your tortoise, but I think it would still be a cool video to watch. So, without further ado, let's get started with the benefits and drawbacks of glass enclosures for your tortoise. To me, glass enclosures includes regular aquariums, which just open at the top, as well as exoterra-style terrariums, which open at the front. While they both do not have the exactly the same benefits and drawbacks, they have similar ones, so I think I can cover them in one video. So let's get started with the drawbacks of using terrariums as enclosures. The first drawback is based on the fact that the enclosure is made completely out of glass, making it extremely heavy. Even small terrariums weigh quite a bit, making it impossible to carry the large sized terrariums on your own. You will definitely need at least two people to carry the terrarium up the stairs and stairs and tight stairwells will become your most hated enemy because glass enclosures cannot be disassembled. You always have to carry them as a whole and believe me, talking from my own experience, when you're carrying a five foot by two foot glass enclosure around a corner in a stairwell, you're going to start to hate stairs. With glass enclosures, you also have to choose between restricted airflow or low humidity. Um, this is because if you cover the top of the aquarium up, you're going to have a great humidity because essentially there's no way for the air to escape out of the terrarium. And if you leave the top completely open, you're going to have great airflow, but you're not going to have any humidity. Um, not having any humidity is not a big deal for adult Mediterranean species such as Russian tortoises, but for juvenile tortoises and tropical tortoises, this matters. This is where exoterra style terrariums differ and are actually better. They um, open at the front and underneath their doors they usually have the slit for air. So you don't, don't only have an opening at the top, you also have one at the front, meaning there's much better airflow. So you can, you can cover the top of the terrarium and still have great airflow, which kind of allows you to have good humidity and great airflow, which is pretty much what you want. I also found that um, with regular glass terrariums that just open up at the top, using towels to cover two thirds of the terrarium works really well. This way you still have airflow, but also keeping the humidity. This is what I did with my box turtle Noel when I kept her in her glass enclosure. And box turtles need quite a lot of humidity and this worked really well. I just had to spray down the enclosure every morning and she was happy. When I kept my Russian tortoise in the same enclosure a couple of years ago, I just left the top completely open because she didn't need much humidity. So making a tortoise cage out of glass, uh, <laughs> making a tortoise cage out of a glass terrarium is definitely doable, but another drawback is that the cages are extremely expensive for their size. A large exoterra goes for at least $250 Canadian and measures only 3 feet by 1.5 feet, which is really small for tortoise species. For the same price, for $250 Canadian, you can definitely build yourself a very nice 8 foot by 4 foot tortoise enclosure out of wood, which provides your tortoise with so much more space and Really for the space, the money that you spend, it's, it's not that much. So if you have a lot of money, let's say you have, I don't know, $20,000 lying around and you want a really nice glass enclosure, sure, you can hire a company and they can build you a really nice room out of glass for your tortoise. But if you're like me and you don't have that kind of money, building your own enclosure is definitely better because glass enclosures are just so expensive. And with their price tag comes their small size. So like I said before, they're fine for keeping little juvenile tortoises and they're fine as a temporary enclosure for your adult tortoises, but they're not going to do as a permanent enclosure for your adult tortoises. What I used to do with Patilla is I kept her in her glass enclosure 
over the winter months and then during the summer months she went outside in her outside enclosure and that way it worked out space-wise. And another drawback, which is actually the last drawback that I'm going to be talking about, is the fact that the size of the enclosure is preset. When you buy the enclosure, it comes in that size and there's nothing you can do to change that. This is especially a big deal if you live in a small setting. So my room in Canada is 13 by 11 feet and is occupied by a four feet by four foot, four foot by four foot tortoise enclosure. The glass enclosures, you can't adjust their size. This wooden enclosure that's four foot by four foot, I measured it out to be, to fit in my room exactly. So that's another drawback with glass aquariums. You can't adjust the size, they come in one size, which kind of sucks. So there are quite a lot of cons, but obviously there's also some pros to using glass enclosures. Otherwise, no one would use them and quite a lot of people do. The first one is that they're very easily available. You can buy a tortoise enclosure, be it the sliding door glass ones or the open top glass ones at almost any large pet store. If they do not have one in stock, they can order you one in and it will be there within a week. You do not need any skills to assemble this. You just need a large car to transport the enclosure. And this is very useful for people who kind of don't plan. They buy a tortoise and then they're like, oh my God, I need a cage for it. So it's quite a big deal for some people and for those that don't have any handyman skills whatsoever and don't want to risk building an enclosure themselves. Glass enclosures, which is a lot more important than the previous, previous pro, are also very easy to clean, which is something I noticed when I switched Patilla from her glass enclosure to the wooden enclosure. Not only is it easier to scoop out the dirt at the bottom with um, just like a hand dusting pan, it's also a lot easier to clean the enclosure using um, liquid cleaners. So with Patilla's cage, once a year, I kind of go through it and I Windex the whole thing to make it look good. I can't do that anymore. So obviously it's not really that big of a deal for Windex, but if you have kind of mites, let's say on your tortoise, which I talked about in a previous video, and you need to clean the whole enclosure and make sure you kill off any mites in the enclosure, it's really easy to do in a glass enclosure but an enclosure made out of wood, it's impossible. So that's what's really nice about glass enclosures as well. And finally, the last pro I wanna talk about, which might not seem that important to you, is the fact that glass enclosures make it a lot easier to interact with your pet. You get to see your pet daily, it's not hidden to, to you behind a wooden wall. And it's just really nice to look at your tortoise. Obviously, your tortoise, doesn't really care about this, couldn't care for it less, but it's important for you as a tortoise owner because you want to interact with your tortoise. So that's the last pro. Before I end this video, I want to talk a little bit more about the fact that enclosures out of glass are see-through because by now people are probably going to be screaming at the video, well, you know what, that's great and all, but what about the fact that tortoises don't understand the concept of glass, will run into the walls, and injure themselves because they keep running into the walls. And I'm gonna have to disagree with that. And I know this is gonna be a little bit of a point of discussion in the comment section probably. In my experience with Patilla and with Noel, I've never had an issue with them running into the walls. They did it, of course, at the beginning because they thought they can go. But then after a while, they started to realize what space in the enclosure was their space. And they didn't run into the walls anymore. So a lot of recent research has was like, well, research, people keeping tortoises posting their opinions on the internet has shown that um, glass enclosures are really not that big of a deal and that tortoises will eventually understand the concept of the glass and not continuously run into it. So in the end, glass enclosures are a perfectly fine solution for you if you have a juvenile tortoise and you need to, you know, keep the humidity up, which is also in a wooden enclosure, sometimes difficult to do. So you can just cover the top with a wet towel and you just don't have the skills to build your own enclosure. So it's a valid choice as long as you make sure that it's not their enclosure for their whole life. So you need to provide your tortoise with an outside enclosure and you need to make sure that outside enclosure is large really, really large, make it as large as you can. And the glass enclosure you buy for inside also make it as large as you can. 
Tortoises need so much space to run around, so it's important that you provide them with the space they need. So, thank you guys for watching. I really hope you enjoyed the video. What I'm going to be trying to do with this series is upload one video every Friday so that you guys have a little bit more of a schedule from my side. And right now I only have five ideas, so that means it's only going to be a little bit more than a month of this series. If you have any ideas about what kind of enclosure I can talk about, please feel free to post it in the comment section below and I'll definitely take a look at those so I can keep this series going for a little longer. Otherwise, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you guys next time.